Glenn Miller was a big band founder, composer, trombone player, and recording artist before and during World War II, when he was also an officer in the U.S. Army Air Force. The popular swing-era band leader boarded a single-engine plane on December 15, 1944, from an airfield about 50 miles north of London. Miller was headed to Paris to make arrangements to bring his army band over to entertain American troops, but as the flight crossed over the English Channel, Major Glenn Miller, who was 40 at the time, along with the pilot John Morgan and one additional passenger, Colonel Norman Bassell, perished in the crash. There have been many theories as to why the plane went down, including that it was shot down by the German Air Force, or maybe the wings were iced over at the time of takeoff. Regardless of how or why, Glenn Miller was sadly never seen or heard from again. Jim Reeves was a country music singer and songwriter. He became well known as a practitioner of the Nashville Sound, and was known for hits like Four Walls and He'll Have to Go. Jim Reeves was in Batesville, Arkansas, when he boarded his single-engine plane on July 31, 1964, bound for Nashville. He was at the controls, while his manager, Dean Manuel, was along for the ride. But they ran into bad weather and became disoriented, causing the plane to crash at a high rate of speed. It would take days to finally locate the wreckage, despite eyewitnesses seeing and hearing the accident. The singer was laid to rest in his hometown of Carthage, Texas, following a procession through the streets of Nashville, where thousands of fans gathered to pay their respects. Aaliyah was a popular singer, dancer, and budding actress whose career spanned the 1990s. She has been credited with helping to redefine contemporary R&B. Following the successful albums Age Ain't Nothing But a Number and One in a Million, she embarked on an acting career that saw her starring in the films Romeo Must Die and Queen of the Damned. It was during a video shoot for her latest album, titled Aaliyah, that she and eight other people boarded a chartered Cessna for a flight from the Bahamas to Florida. But the airplane would never make it off the island, crashing just after takeoff, killing all on board. Following the crash, an investigation was launched to figure out why. They discovered that the pilot had drugs in his system, and that the plane had been overloaded, exceeding its weight limit. Aaliyah was just 22 years old when she died. Despite being so young, she had accomplished quite a lot, including briefly marrying the now-disgraced singer R. Kelly. John Denver was a singer and songwriter known for popularizing folk music in the 1970s, and he is widely considered a cultural icon of the American West. The 53-year-old was an experienced pilot, too, but his pilot license had been suspended following drunk driving incidents. Despite this, Denver climbed into a home-built aircraft he had recently purchased and took it for a flight along the Pacific Coast, near Pacific Grove, California, on October 12, 1997. Suddenly, the airplane plunged into the ocean, crashing and killing Denver. The investigators were able to determine that the crash occurred after Denver unsuccessfully attempted to switch fuel tanks in flight, a maneuver that may have led him to inadvertently hit the rudder pedal by mistake, leading to a loss of control. John Denver's remains were then cremated, and his ashes were scattered across the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, a fitting tribute to the Rocky Mountain High singer. Randy Rhodes was the co-founder of the heavy metal band Quiet Riot. He was also known for playing guitar and co-writing songs with Ozzy Osbourne on his first two solo albums. Rhodes was 25 when he boarded a small plane in Leesburg, Florida on March 19, 1982, to go for a joyride. He was a passenger in the airplane, which was flown by their tour bus driver, Andy Aycock, and the intent was to get some aerial photos and buzz the tour bus for some fun. The accident happened when Aycock, whose pilot license had expired, attempted to buzz Ozzy Osbourne's tour bus, but during the attempt, the aircraft wings clipped the bus, and the plane crashed into a house. All three of the passengers on the plane died instantly, and they were burned beyond recognition. Randy Rhodes was fearful of flying, but wanted to get some photos that he could show his mother. Instead, his body had to be identified using dental records. Patsy Cline was a singer who was considered one of the most influential of the 20th century and she was one of the first country music artists to cross over into pop music. She was on her way back to Nashville from Kansas City when she and three others boarded the Piper Comanche on March 5, 1963. 
The pilot was her manager, Randy Hughes, and the other passengers aboard were country singer Cowboy Copas and Hawkshaw Hawkins. Bad weather had caused the plane to stop several times, and they even refueled in Arkansas before continuing on to Nashville. But shortly after taking off in Dyersburg, Tennessee, despite being warned not to fly, the plane fell from the sky about 90 miles short of the Music City. The wreckage was found the next day in Camden, Tennessee, and Patsy's wristwatch was recovered, which displayed the time of the accident of 6.20 p.m. The watch is now part of the Country Music Hall of Fame's collection, which commemorates the life of Patsy Cline. James Horner was a composer who worked on over 160 film and television productions between 1978 and 2015, including Aliens, Field of Dreams, Braveheart, and Avatar, among many others. He was best known for his work on the James Cameron-directed 1997 film Titanic, which earned Best Original Dramatic Score and Best Original Song for the Celine Dion classic My Heart Will Go On. Horner was a trained pilot and had decided to take his turboprop aircraft for a flight on June 22, 2015. He was flying over the Los Padres National Forest, north of Los Angeles, California. Eyewitnesses on the ground reported that he was flying at low levels, just above the trees with rapid altitude changes, as he skimmed the ridgeline and maneuvered through the canyon, which caused the crash. Three days later, the Ventura County Medical Examiner's Office ruled the crash an accident, and the NTSB reported that Horner failed to maintain clearance, which led to the crash. Otis Redding is regarded as one of the greatest singers in the history of American music, but his life was cut short at the early age of 26. On December 10, 1967, Redding and members of his band boarded his private jet on a flight from Cleveland headed towards Madison, Wisconsin, with pilot Richard Frazier at the controls. The weather was bad, with cold drizzle and fog moving in. As they approached Madison, the airplane fell from the sky, crashing into Lake Monona, which was just four miles from the airport. The waters were frigid, and there was only one survivor from the band, Ben Cauley, who was able to describe the moments the plane hit the water. Today, the cause of the crash still remains unclear, although some speculate that they may have had engine troubles. One month after the crash, Redding's Sitting on the Dock of the Bay was released, and it went straight to number one. The band Leonard Skinnerd spent five years touring small venues under various names, and with several lineup changes before finally deciding on the name Leonard Skinnerd in 1969. The band had just released their fifth album, Street Survivors, and were boarding a flight on October 20th, 1977 in Greenville, South Carolina, en route to Baton Rouge. The plane took off and made it into Mississippi when things went wrong. The plane crashed near Gillsburg, Mississippi, and the investigation that followed discovered that the plane had run out of fuel. Apparently, the pilots had not checked the fuel gauges ahead of time, and once the plane ran out of gas, they attempted an emergency landing. The plane ended up going down in a dense forest, and lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and backup singer Cassie Gaines were all killed on impact. Luckily, there were 20 people on board the plane that did survive the crash. Rocky Marciano was a professional boxer from 1947 to 1955, and he held the World Heavyweight title from 1952 to 1956. On August 31, 1969, one day before his 46th birthday, he was a passenger in a small private plane that was headed to Des Moines, Iowa. It was nighttime and bad weather had rolled in. The pilot had a minimal number of hours of flying time, and only 35 of them at night, and he had no instrument rating. When the plane tried to land at a small airfield outside Newton, Iowa, the aircraft hit a tree two miles short of the runway. It is assumed that the pilot experienced spatial disorientation caused by his lack of flying experience. Flying with Marciano in the back seat was Frankie Farrell, the oldest son of organized crime figure Lou Farrell, and all three people on board were killed. Buddy Holly was a huge star in the music industry, Richie Valens was just starting his career, and the Big Bopper was a legendary radio host in the winter of 1959. They were in Clear Lake, Iowa together performing on a tour called the Winter Dance Party, and they were headed to their next gig in Fargo on February 3rd. 
Shortly after taking off, the single-engine airplane encountered bad snowy weather and would end up crashing in a frozen cornfield not far from the airport. Buddy Holly was 22, Richie Valens was 17, and the Big Bopper was 28, and all of them perished in the crash, which also took the life of the pilot. The investigation that followed blamed the pilot, who was not prepared for the weather he encountered on the flight. And it was bad luck for Richie Valens, who won a coin toss for his seat on the ill-fated plane. Mike Todd was a film producer known for his 1956 film Around the World in 80 Days, which won an Academy Award for Best Picture. He was married to Elizabeth Taylor in 1957, with whom he had a turbulent relationship. He was the third of Taylor's seven husbands, and the only one who she did not divorce. That's because Todd boarded his private plane, named The Liz, one year after they were married, and Elizabeth Taylor was supposed to be on board too, but she decided not to go because she was sick. The plane was overloaded and flying in icy conditions, which led to it crashing on March 22, 1958 in New Mexico. His funeral took place two days later in Forest Park, Illinois, where he was rumored to have been buried with a ring placed on his finger by Elizabeth Taylor, valued at over $100,000. Twenty years later, the body of Mike Todd was stolen from the grave after thieves dug it up and took the plastic bag which carried his remains. They were looking for the 10 carat diamond ring, but they did didn't find it, so five days later, the bag of bones was dropped off close to the original grave. He was once again identified through his dental records and reburied in a secret location. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and maybe even consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching this playlist, and then visit the channel to search the Recollection Road Library. As always, thank you so much for watching.